Put your hands together as best you and come tonight. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. I'd like to uh, first, this is a worshiping church, as we know, and this is a musical church whether you know it or not. <laughs> so I'd like to uh, have you guys help me out with the chorus of this song. And uh, it'll make sense maybe a little later while we're singing this. But let's just do a chorus of, We shall overcome. We shall overcome. We shall overcome. typically um, think about our ancestors, mm. some that have paid, those that have paved the way for yes. us. Uh, certainly our ancestors of the 19th and 20th century, people like Martin Luther King, Harriet Tubman, Sojourner Truth, mm. uh, Malcolm X, Frederick Douglass, mm -hmm. Rosa Parks, and so, so, so many others. Um, but I also think a lot about my own matriarchs and patriarchs within my own family. And while preparing to speak today, I, for some reason I had my maternal grandmother, she came to mind, well she always comes to mind, she was a praying woman, but she particularly came to mind uh, last few days. Um, and as we just did, we have a history of humming and moaning, you know, these were comfort, these were ways in which our people comforted themselves mm -hmm. in times that were less than ideal, to mm -hmm. say the least, right? Mm -hmm. um, and this whole thing, even as you guys were humming just now, it brought back memories of, of my grandmother, who I typically spent the summers with growing up in Mississippi, um, and Christmases she spent with us in Chicago. And as a young boy, 
I always remember hearing her voice. And I think it's one of the reasons why I'm, I became attracted to music, actually. Mm -hmm. um, now, typically she would start off with a hymn, but invariably it would turn into her humming. Mm -hmm. It would turn into her even even a term we call scatting. You know, right. those of you that right. listen to people like Ella Fitzgerald and right. Sarah Vaughn and people like that, if you don't know those names, look them up. <laughs> <They're> very important. <laughs> but 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 her sound. The main thing is that her sound was a sound that I grew so accustomed to and that I desired. I never really shared it completely with her, but uh, but in the back of my mind, it was something that I looked forward to hearing, you know, especially in the mornings. You know, I looked forward to hearing that sound. And just as I looked forward to, to that sound, I want you to know that our Heavenly Father desires our unique sound. Mm -hmm. We hear Pastor Cooper talk about, no, don't clap your hands, say something, yes. say something. Mm -hmm. And my, my grandmother, you know, she didn't consider herself a musician or a singer. But she had a unique sound, mm -hmm. a sound that only she had. Um, as a matter of fact, that sound that God has cre that created in her and has created in us is something that he has intended. Whether you say, I can carry a tune or not, mm -hmm. God's not concerned about that. Amen. But he's in concerned about your sound, mm -hmm. your sound, your sound. Because he created us yes. for the sole purpose of worshiping yes. and Amen. praising him. Mm -hmm. And just like I recognized and desired my grandmother's vocalizing, God recognizes and desires your sound. Amen. Mm -hmm. Whether your sound is refined, or, or shall I say a lyrical, refined singing sound, or whether your sound is rough, doesn't make any difference. God created you. I didn't, you know, but God created you just as you are. And so just remember, God's word confirms in Psalms 147, 11. He delights in yes. those who fear him, mm -hmm. who yes. put their hope in his unfailing love. Mm -hmm. And there's other scriptures like that. You could jot down Psalm 18, 19. Mm -hmm. You can also, uh, a very popular scripture, one, uh, Psalm 139, 4. We were wonderfully made, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. uh, but whether you're a great singer or not, I want you to know God recognizes and desires your sound. Mm -hmm. Like my grandmother, perhaps, your go-to sound is to hum, you know? Maybe you can't remember the lyrics, you can, all, you can hum. <laughs> but know that it's okay. Use it, use it, use it, use it to worship the Father. Amen. Use it. Now, some of you are probably wondering, Pastor Cooper, call Iran up here. Pastor Iran to, to do a music appreciation class. <laughs> <laughs> no, he didn't. <laughs> so I'll, I'll go into what I want to talk about. Um, <laughs> but let's look at that acronym, H U M, mm -hmm. um, which, as I was studying, it, it, it made me think about a biblical principle. And that biblical principle of to hear, to understand, and to move. H U M. Hear, understand, and move. The hum principle, if you will. Um, you know, um, God intended us to live victorious and abundant lives, right? God has intended that for us. And he promised us, if we hear God's word, if we understand God's word, and then move on God's word, he will fulfill his promises. Yes. Yes. He yes. will fulfill his promises. He's not, a, he's not a man that he should lie. Amen. So in this regard, we can say, hum your way to victory. Amen. Hum Amen. your way right. to All victory. Right. That's good. So let's, let's pray. Heavenly Father, Illuminate your word, Father, yes, in our hearts, yes. in our minds, and even in our deeds, Lord, as we listen to what you have to say to us in the next few minutes, Father. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord. For you have made us more than conquerors, Father. Yes. No weapon forged against us shall prosper, yes. Father. So I ask that you unlock your mysteries yes. so that we may be able to receive yes. your magnificent yes. promises, Father. 
have your way, Lord. As you increase and I decrease, and speak to the hearts of your people. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name, we pray. So, turn to a, a familiar passage of Scripture with me. Uh, John 21, verses 1 through 14. And this is pretty familiar, I think, to most of us. This is another story of a divine fish fry, if you will. <laughs> um, so I'm just going to read, read God's word. Afterward, Jesus appeared again to his disciples. Now you can underline that word again. He had appeared to them, to him, to them twice before since his death and resurrection. But he appeared again to his disciples by the Sea of Galilee. It happened this way. Simon Peter, Thomas, also known as Didymus, Nathaniel from Canaan in Galilee, the sons of Jebedee, who happened to be James and John, and other and two other disciples were together. Verse 3 reads, I'm going out to fish, Simon Peter told them. And they said, we'll go with you. So they went out and got into the boat. But that night, they caught nothing. That night, they caught nothing. So I want to stop here for a minute and kind of unpack a little bit of, of, of what God uh, put on my heart about just those first three verses. Um, to me, in this third verse, we're, we're in a season of walking in agreement. And even as simple as this is, th to me this shows a big picture of agreement. Simon Peter told them, uh, he said, I'm going out fishing. And all of them, according to God's word, said, we'll go with you. Mm -hmm. It's interesting because I can just imagine myself, see, I, I like going fishing, by the way. And I know in my household, I, I have three daughters and a wife. So usually, when I say I'm going fishing, they have much better things to do. So, but I can imagine that, you know, in any situation. But all these men said, we're going with you. That was a, that was an, that was a, a pot, there's, a, there's an agreement that happened. And it unlocks something, I believe. It unlocked, because there's, agree there's power in agreement. Yes. Amen. And I believe just the fact that they all were in agreement, in agreement, it unlocked a natural, a supernatural anointed power. And we're going to talk about that power in a second. Furthermore, you got to understand these men were experts, <coughs> expert fishermen. Not like myself, who if I'm lucky, get out. With, I might get out four times a year, <laughs> you know. But they were experts, you know. Um, and the thought of catching no fish was really probably not a, not in the equation for these men because they had years of experience. Experience. I'm sure they had knowledge of uh, oceanography and marine biology <laughs> and so forth. And uh, so the thought of catching nothing was just not in the equation. They were highly trained. Um, many of them were descendants of generations of fishermen. Mm -hmm. so, so they had, seemingly they had the tools to succeed. But the fact <coughs> of the matter is, the word says what? They caught nothing. They, caught nothing. nothing. they were failing miserably. But then, Say, but then. But then. God showed up. Amen. 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 So the word continues in verse 4. Early in the morning, Jesus himself stood on the shore. Mm -hmm. But at first, the disciples did not recognize that it was Jesus. So he came on the scene right on time. As he did then, he is still a right on time Amen. God. Amen. Amen. Um, he called out to them, friends, haven't you any fish? I know they didn't want to answer that. <laughs> but in fact, they said no. They answered no. So he gave them a simple instruction in this next verse. And I wonder, like, as expert fishermen, why didn't they think of this? And maybe they had tried it, for all we know. But he gave them a simple instruction. He didn't talk in French. 
He didn't, because God, he's sovereign. He knows everything, yes, every yes, language. Yes, yes. But he spoke in a way that they could understand him. Yes, yes. And he simply said, throw your net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. When they did, when they obeyed, mm -hmm. they were unable to haul the net in because of the large number of fish. Yes. Mm -hmm. When they did, so they had to do something. Yes. They couldn't just say, oh, this guy said, you know, throw our nets. They had to physically put those yes. nets yes. on the other side yes. of the yes. boat. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and this is really, in, in, in the world of like fishing this way, I had, a, had the privilege of, of traveling to Ghana a few years ago and I, I watched, I actually rode on a fisher, fisherman boat and they have these canoes. And it's no small task actually to move that net to one side of the boat. It's a huge, huge net, very heavy, and uh, it takes some manpower to do, to do the job of fishing when you're doing it that way. But the, anyway, they had to move. They had to move uh, in obedience. So, but not only did they catch fish, but they caught an abundance mm -hmm. over and above what they ever hoped for. Mm -hmm. Double, double, mm -hmm. triple, triple. Mm -hmm. um, going on, verse seven. Then the disciple whom Jesus loved, uh, the theologians believe that this particular disciple was John, mm -hmm. said to Peter, it is the Lord. As soon as Simon Peter heard him say, it is the Lord. He wrapped his outer garment around him, for he had taken it off and jumped into the water. Now remember I said this was the Sea of Galilee. This man jumped into the water. So you got to love Peter's zealousness, right? <laughs> the other disciples followed in the boat. One, I want to, let me just go back up to, to, to uh, verse 6 for a minute, because this also shows the power of agreement. I would imagine if I was in that boat, I had been out there all night, perhaps, and then some guy from the shore said, hey, throw your nets on the other side. If not me, I would imagine if I was in a group of seven or eight, eight men, we probably, some of them probably would have been like, you know, I've been fishing all my life. Why do you want me to do such a thing? You know, that, that would have been disagreement, discord. But I like this verse, and I love passages in the scriptures like this where it shows a team effort, mm -hmm. where it shows agreement like this. So, so that's the power, and I, I truly believe that when we operate that way in unity and agreement and on one accord, there's a supernatural power that, that we unleash, so to speak. Mm -hmm. All right? So moving on, uh, verse 8. The disciples followed in the boat, towing the net full of fish, for they were not far from shore, about a hundred yards, still a long ways to swim. Mm -hmm. When they landed, they saw a fire burning, they saw a fire of burning coals there with fish on it and some bread. Mm. All right, you know. <laughs> and the, so I, I don't want to skip too far ahead, but I'll go on to verse 10 for a second. Jesus said Jesus was already there. Mm -hmm. He was already, and he already had what they needed. Mm -hmm. He was already there. Mm -hmm. And he said, bring some of the fish you have just caught. Mm -hmm. So the Lord graciously received them, and he served them. Something we're going to do next week, right? Mm -hmm. That's what we're talking about, washing feet. You know, those of us that are in leadership, we this is a lesson for us. You know, this is a, a picture of servant yes. leadership, yes. Mm -hmm. you know? Uh, Peter's denial of Christ was in, in uh, Peter's, well, let me just say that, okay, so God, the Lord graciously received them mm -hmm. and served them. Mm -hmm. And he was already, he already had what they needed, mm -hmm. and he had already started mm -hmm. the feast. Mm -hmm. uh, but nevertheless, he invited them, and he went on to serve them. So verse 11, let's go keep moving. So Simon Peter climbed back into the boat and dragged the net ashore. It was full of not just fish, but large mm -hmm. fish, mm -hmm. 153 of them. <laughs> but even with so many, the net was not torn. The net was not torn. Mm -hmm. And just another side note, uh, you know, the like fishermen of, 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 of this style, they spend 
in, in preparation to go out to catch fish, they spend like months and months working on these nets mm -hmm. by hand, mm -hmm. you know, crafting them. And so for that net not to break after 153 fishes, I mean, <coughs> a, a fish, that shows, you know, that's another, it's a slight thing, but it also shows a supernatural, yeah. gives you a, a sense of the supernatural power of agreement. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, let's go on to verse 12. Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast again, inviting them. None of the dis disciples dare ask him, who are you? <laughs> okay, because they knew it was the Lord. Yeah. You know, they understood. Now here we go with our with our acronym. These disciples understood that they were in the presence of the Lord. Yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. They heard him mm -hmm. and they understood his voice. Mm -hmm. And not only did they understand his voice, but they moved in unity mm -hmm. to his explicit instructions. He didn't say Turn, bring the net, you know, in the middle of the boat. He didn't say move it farther left, but he gave them really definite instruction. Mm -hmm. It's very, very important that we don't miss that. Because sometimes we want to kind of put our own interpretation on things mm -hmm. when God's word is black and white. Mm -hmm. So we have to be careful that, that we want to hear God's word and we want to understand it. Yes. And then we want to move, mm -hmm. hopefully in unity, yes. uh, to his specific instructions. Mm -hmm. So they understood uh, that they were in, and, and another side of this thing is that, you know, the word tells us that Jesus had come to them two other times. Mm -hmm. And so a part of me wonders, these men were truly men of God. Mm -hmm. They had walked with God. Mm -hmm. They had uh, uh, broken bread. They had communed with God on a very deep level. Mm -hmm. And he came back to them two other times. He brought them out of the life of fishing for fish mm -hmm. and into the life of fishing for men. Mm -hmm. So I'm just wondering myself at this juncture in John why were they kind of returning back to their mm -hmm. comfort zone mm -hmm. you know why so I kind of see that they and, and we all can get that way they were kind of in the wrong place a little bit in this juncture of their life and ministry and that's okay uh, being that this was the third time that Jesus had appeared to them yeah. mm. but in spite of their current condition of returning to that comfort zone, let's say, mm -hmm. of fishing for fish as opposed to fishing for men, yes. as they were ordained to do. This, that, that instruction goes back to Matthew 4, 19. Mm -hmm. The Lord still graciously received them. Mm -hmm. He served them. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you now, church, this, the, 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 the God is still in the business of supplying our needs. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. He's still ready and able to receive us. Yes. 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 And those of us, when we get a little down, he's still able to restore and replenish us. Yes. He did it for them, and he will do it for us. Yes. He provided their physical needs, and he, he, he also restored them physically, replenished them, Physically, but I, I, I believe he encouraged them. He encouraged their walk to maybe go to the next level because you got to understand this is the last chapter of John. Mm -hmm. Right, be, right after this, we go into Acts, mm -hmm. the Acts of the Apostle yes, when the yes. church was established. I believe Jesus had to be there to for these men at this particular time to prepare them for a greater work. Amen. For a greater work. They couldn't continue to be in their comfort zone fishing for fish. They had to move forward. They had to move forward. So, I mean, how many of you know that after a close and intimate encounter with Jesus Christ, our life should never be the same. It should never be the same. We have to move forward. Yes, right. Moving backwards or returning to our old habits, maybe returning back to our old relationships that are dysfunctional or, or, or things that we shouldn't be involved in, mm -hmm. going back to that comfort zone, we have to avoid it. Yes. 
Amen. at all costs. Yes. And we're not by ourselves. Mm -hmm. We have a body of believers Amen. around us. Yes. But most importantly, we have the Holy Spirit yes. who yes. empowers us yes. in keeping that mm -hmm. old man, that old woman, Jesus. that old child at yes. bay, yes. as Pastor Cooper's been teaching mm -hmm. on. Mm -hmm. Keeping it at bay so that we don't return to the old man. And if we do, we can quickly move out of it. Okay? Amen. So let's embrace the notion that any setback any setback can be and must quickly turn into a setup for God's rescue. Any setback must quickly turn into a setup for God's rescue. Amen. So as we hear in John 21, he is a God of abundance and a God of restoration. As illustrated in this passage, he does require something, though. He does require us to hear, yes. understand, and move on his word. Amen. There's our hum principle, H-U-M. Hear, understand, and move on his word. Amen? Amen. 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 These men, you got to remember, as I said before, were ex experts in their own right. Um, and as I mentioned, the thought of catching fish <laughs> was not in the equation, but then our Lord enters the scene. Yes. Enters the scene. Yes. So um, he makes the, the lyrics of a, word, of a song that we sing, he makes all things new. Yes. Yes. Okay. So these disciples, they needed something uniquely different in their lives mm -hmm. to change that situation around. They needed something beyond their abilities, beyond their experience, beyond their training, yes, yes, yes. beyond their uh, master's degree, beyond their doctorate degree. They needed something else beyond their vocation, yes. beyond their career, beyond their profession, beyond the world system. They needed a word from Amen. the Lord, Amen. just a word. Amen. And that word was simply throw your net on the right side of the boat, yeah. and you will find them. They just needed a word, just a word. Amen? Like them, I am, I don't know about you guys, but I am continuously in need of a word in order to fulfill the destiny that he has for me, in order to change things in my life for the better. I need a word. What about you? Am I the only one? Amen. So just maybe your net might be on the wrong side of the boat. <laughs> just maybe, you know, that's something, you know, whatever that may mean to you. So we see the hum principle at work in this extraordinary, supernatural even fishing adventure in which God, uh, Jehovah Jireh, actually provided not only the, 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 the fresh fish of the day, but also an ocean front, <laughs> charcoal grilled <laughs> fish dinner complete with bread. <laughs> and uh, because I mean he not only provide he provides more, you know, yes, more than does. ever more than we could ever hope for. Right. And that's why, you know, these these this victory that we need in our lives, he will fulfill and he yes, can yes, fulfill yes, and he yes, will yes, fulfill yes, and, and uh, it's something that we have to continuously hold on to. Yes, our faith, our faith. Uh, so the, the disciples were blessed because they heard, they understood, and they moved. Yes. I want to encourage you and encourage myself to apply this same principle to our lives to obtain Amen. victory over every situation that comes our way, whether it's a health issue, whether it's um, an emotional issue, you know. Invite God to take control. Amen. Surrender that situation Amen. to God. Amen. You know, as he did for the disciples. I mean, we're using fish, but you can replace that with anything. So in regard to hearing, I want to just share a couple points on each of these um, acronym parts, if you will, the H meaning hearing, hearing. So in regard to hearing, note here uh, that the disciples were in a position to hear from the Lord. And that starts, I think, with a desire, a thirst, mm -hmm. a willingness. Now in their case, it might even have been frustration. Mm -hmm. 
But I want to encourage us, we have to desire, we have to thirst, we have to thirst for the word. That's why on Wednesdays, this place should be packed. Yes, it yes, should yes. be packed. Mm -hmm. It should be more people here on Wednesday than even on Sunday. Yes, yes. Yes. Because this is when you have the chance to hear the word of God. Mm -hmm. Amen. And so it starts with that desire. Yes. Yes. Hearing starts with the desire and the thirst and the willingness to seek God with God's word. Because the thing is, one of the things you have to understand, too, is that it does take, it does take a village mm -hmm. <laughs> to, uh, to, to, to do this thing. Mm -hmm. You know, trying to do it by yourself, you're inviting the enemy. Yes. Because I want you, you to know that the enemy, the devil, he knows more word than probably Amen. all of us put together. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. And he will, and he does use it against mm -hmm. us. But that's why we have to surround ourselves with other believers. That's why we have to listen. Right. And can you imagine if um, a couple of them or one of them would have replied, well, you know, according to my calculations and my research and uh, mm -hmm. moving the net over to the right would cause, um, you know, this and that and that, some kind of illogical thing, you know. But, but they didn't have any of that, thank God. Mm -hmm. And so we can learn from that. Mm -hmm. um, Secondly, this notion of understanding. We must understand God's word. And this is, uh, Pastor Cooper said something a couple weeks ago that, that really made me think about this. Um, this is in total opposition of living like a veil is between mm -hmm. us mm -hmm. and God. But uh, to understand, it comes out of a relationship. And this, the, the, the the word reminds us that the veil was torn mm -hmm. when Jesus died. Mm -hmm. Therefore, we must believe that despite of what we might be doing, no matter how small it is, catching fish, or how big it is, going through uh, a, a, the death of a loved one, whatever the case may be and everything in between, Jesus is with us. Yes. He's that not only with us, but he's showing us the way. All we have to do is quiet down mm -hmm. and listen. Mm -hmm. He's directing us. He's showing us the way. He's instructing us. He's guiding us through the process. And it's up to us to understand. It's up to us to hear. It's up to us to, to understand. Um, but you got to remember, even this, this verse that we have up here, you know, the Lord's plans is to prosper us, mm -hmm. not to harm us. Mm -hmm. To give us, he gives us plans he, he, not to harm us, plans to give us hope and a future. And not just a future, but an abundant future. Yes, yes, not yes, just yes. a future where we're just existing. Yes. But just as in the case of this scripture, uh, a, 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 a hope that, that we have abundance more than we could ever imagine. Yes. More than, yes. than, than we ever could overflow. even use. Yeah. An overflow, if you will. Okay? Um, and lastly, to move. I'm reminded of a very familiar scripture in James 1, 22. Mm -hmm. And the word of God tells us, do not merely listen to the word. Mm. And so, I like this part, deceive yourself. Ah, if yes. you just listen, guess what? You are deceiving yourself. Yes, yes, but you yes. must do what it says. Yes. You must do yes. what it says. Yes. Um, to do denotes movement. Mm -hmm. Whether physical, mental, or emotional, mm -hmm. some form of action needs to take place yeah. in order to change a particular situation. Yes. You cannot stay the same. Good. You Good. cannot stay the Good. same. Good. You, you must move. Yourself. You cannot <laughs> stay the same. Good. And you know, it, it's interesting because sometimes that can be difficult. Mm -hmm. I know it can be difficult. Mm -hmm. We all kind of want things sometimes to stay the same. But things cannot stay the same. When things are staying the same, we're not growing. Amen. Right? Amen. And, and as challenging Amen. as it is, as challenging as it is, and, and I know I experience it, we have to accept it. We have to accept it and embrace it that God is doing something in yes, our lives. Yes. He's moving. For me to get up here, I'm used to doing 10-minute works, <laughs> you know, for prayer. So for me to get up here and expound a little bit, <laughs> this is movement. 
I was kidding with my wife. I was saying, well, you know, I'm, I'm going to be a, I'm just going to be as best prepared to, to do 10 minutes <laughs> as I possibly can. And as soon as I said that, Pastor Donna called me and said, hey, can you do Wednesday? So, you know, but that's okay. That's okay. It's on, that's okay because I know that's God. It's not, it's not Pastor Donna. It's not Pastor Donna. It's, it's God. And we have to move. We have to move. Overdrive. Yes, yes. I love So move in the right direction. Move forward. But that's key too. We have to move in the right direction. We can't just move just to be moved. We have to move in the right direction. And that's where hearing and understanding comes into play. We have to be moving forward, not backwards. When we find ourselves moving backwards, we might have missed part of that yes. understanding, yeah. part of that uh, hearing, yeah. you know, when we're moving backwards. It's just like when we operate our, our cars, those of us that drive. We cannot operate that vehicle safely if we just looked, looked in the rear view mirror, right? Mm -hmm. Can you imagine driving mm -hmm. forward but like keeping God. our eye on the rear view mirror? Like that's, a, that's, a, a, that's, that's dangerous, mm -hmm. and that is a, uh, yeah. you're asking for disaster, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? So we have to press on. Philippians 3, 12 through 24 encourages us to press toward the mark, press on, forgetting what is behind and straining forward. Straining, I like that word, straining forward mm -hmm. to what is ahead. Amen. Amen. Amen? So we have to keep our mind, we have to keep our eyes, and we have to keep our heart on the prize. Yes. What is God telling us to do? God, uh, God only promises to prosper us, as we read in Jeremiah 29, 11. To prosper us and not to harm us. He promises that. I didn't promise it. No man can give you that promise, but that's a God's given yes. promise. Thank the Lord for his word that he can promise something like that. He's the sovereign God. All knowing, all wisdom, all wise. So in conclusion, I want to encourage each one of you to be one who hears God's voice. Don't be, don't, don't uh, make sure you hear God's voice. Don't get distracted from God's voice. Mm -hmm. There are people in this church who can counsel you. You're not walking alone. Mm -hmm. Come to Bible class. Yeah. Get involved in prayer. Yes, yes, if you're yes. not doing, you know, one of the 5 a.m. prayers, prayer days, or one of the six o'clock days, we have it Wednesday. Well, we only have one six o'clock on Wednesday, but we have the phone line on Thursday. If you're not doing Friday. at least Friday, Friday. Friday. I say Thursday, excuse me. If you're not doing at least one of those, make it a point to do one. You know what I mean? Uh, and if you're doing two, Guess what? Three. Push toward three. Amen. Amen. If you're doing three, do four. push toward four. Amen. If you're doing all of them, create a new one. Overdrive. 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 But be one who hears God's word, Amen. whether he speaks in a soft voice or whether he speaks it loud. Even when no one else does, and that can be tricky too, even if no one in your household here is hearing or seeking to hear God's word, do it anyway. Mm -hmm. Even if no one in your job is doing it, do it anyway. Even if no one in your school is doing it, do it anyway. No one is in your community, do it anyway. Amen. Hear God's word, seek to hear God's word, and, and be a finisher. See, sometimes we can stop at hearing. So, uh, man, I can't tell you, I, I am uh, uh, an educator, and I um, you know, teach at the, at the college level, and I can't tell you over and over almost every day how much advising goes into students. They, un they, they hear, but that's as far as it goes. Mm -hmm. Four years will pass, and that's as far as it goes. Wow. So we have to be a finisher. Mm -hmm. We have to be a finisher, people of God. Mm -hmm. And Amen. we finish by understanding. If we understand the word of God, then we can apply it. Amen. Amen. So we have to understand. I want to encourage you. Be one that 
understands the word. Seek to understand the word. Um, you know, Pastor Cooper always says, walk with your Bible. But then take a, go a step farther this year. Get a concordia. Go a little farther. You know, get a Bible dictionary if you don't already have one. Push, go forward, go forward, go forward. Understand the word. Exercise your faith. So we're talking about being a finisher mm -hmm. by understanding and exercise your faith. Mm -hmm. We say that we are people of faith, mm -hmm. but are we showing it yes, that we are people of faith? Build the muscles. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so be, you know, exercise your faith by moving yes. according to God's word. Yeah. Moving. So hear, understand, and move. Hum your way. To victory Amen. in your spiritual life, in your health, in your finances, in your marriage, in your relationships, Amen. in your career, Amen. in your job, Amen. and in your emotional well-being. Amen.